Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at the full release of Airport Sim, a game available now on Steam, which you can get with the link down below in the description, and one that I've been highly anticipating because after the demo, I was kind of blown away by this, and I thought this would be a great game for me and my friends to play as soon as it's released. Well, thanks to the devs for sending over a little early copy before its release, and thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. We're, we're going to take a look at all the different uh, airports, all the different locations, and things you can do in this game, which seemingly would seem easy or rather mundane, but actually there's quite a lot of uh, hustle and bustle to operating all the different equipment at an airport. Part of the ground crew working with the flight crew to get you in the air or off the plane or your luggage safe and sound to where it's going there's a lot more than meets the eye here, as well as customization for including your own livery and different types of airlines and or make your own on the game, and Steam Workshop support, which is awesome. You're actually able to create your own scenarios, share it with friends, and download other people's creations for things like storms and whatnot, where you can change the weather on the fly. From one moment, you can be in a giant rainstorm and then a blizzard and then a sunny day if you want to. And uh, yeah, there's lots of challenge modes for this game too, including a scenario mode for yourself, free play and challenge mode which you can all do solo or you can do scenarios and free play with friends and then of course create your own through the extras menu which is pretty sweet as well all right let's go ahead and jump in and take ourselves a look at some of the tutorials which show some of the features of the game and then we're going to survive a huge tropical storm that's coming into key west and see if we can get some passengers off a plane before it rolls in let's go before we get into the giant storm scenario, I just wanted to show you some of the tutorials which show some of the features of this game, including the tablet, which allows you to change the weather at any time, uh, the follow me mode, which allows you to kind of escort aircraft around the airport and taxi them wherever they need to go, and same with the martial mode, which allows you to uh, essentially guide an aircraft into its parking space, or stand chocks and cones, which allow you to basically park the aircraft, and the GPU, which assists with that, keeping power on the aircraft. There's also the passenger stairs and jetway, too, and the shuttle bus, which all kind of work together, as well as the catering truck to get food and things on and off the aircraft. Of course, we also have luggage, which is different for the two aircraft, the 737 and the A320, both different with how they handle luggage, and the same with how they handle fueling. And the APU is kind of the same, but a little different. And then also the operation of pushing back and walking around aircraft too. So that's kind of getting ready. Last thing you do before the aircraft is departing and getting on its way to takeoff. So pretty cool, the uh, differences between the two aircraft and a lot of things to do. I mean, it seems like only two, uh, that is not enough, but there's plenty of things to do. And each of these jobs are mostly different when it comes to each different aircraft. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and see if we can survive the storm in Airport Sim. Welcome to the Contra Republic and welcome to Key West. There's a giant storm rolling in and the last few planes in the sky are about to land soon and we're going to have to get all their passengers and luggage off the plane so that way they can of course land safely and get here before the storm. What is this? <laughs> Giggity Goo Airlines? Uh, is this a... No, this couldn't be a reference to... No. Uh, we like where this is going, I guess so. All right, well, before you can see it, you can definitely hear it. A plane is about to land loaded with passengers, and that's going to be our first task here for today in Key West in order to uh, offload all those guys and get our uh, part of the bargain done as we are the ground crew. There they come now. Perfect. Beautiful. All right. Well, nice landing. All right, if we go to operations here, we can see that that plane has landed from Atlanta, and our first goal will be to meet them at stand two and then start with uh, placing cones and chocks and then getting all the cargo offloaded and anything else that they need in order to uh, yeah, complete their flight. It's kind of cool here, too. You can see a lot of the small aircraft like Piper Cubs, Cessnas, private jets, etc., etc., that are all over the airfield here and many other airports you might be able to see them too now this is the smallest of i think the four airfields with this one only having a few stands and it's perfect for four player multiplayer to kind of get started and learn we're going to go ahead and connect some things here and uh, oh it's actually really cool we can see all the fire equipment and a few other vehicles that we can't actually use we're more ground operations not necessarily fire or whatnot but it is cool to see them here and that they're kind of part of the show we have a couple of gpus that we can use ground power units to power both this and uh well whatever aircraft's landing now of course there's the uh, a320 and the 737 in the game uh and it looks like i th they actually don't know what's landing first but we'll find that out in just a moment but we do need to find ourselves a gpu we'll kind of get the more modern one but there is a lot of vehicles to drive around here everything from the uh, stairs truck 
to conveyor belts, to small trailers, and uh, lots of other things that uh, can help us get around the airport, such as pickup trucks, fueling tankers, and much more. Ah, here's the GPU. All right, we're going to connect to this thing here. This is kind of the newer version of it, but there's also the older version. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do the older version, and we'll do things the old-fashioned way. But we'll take one of these uh, kind of newer... I don't know. Everything's kind of newer and older based on what I've heard from some of my friends who actually work at airports like this. Uh, there's just kind of different types of equipment that's still good. It's just, you know, modern is fine and older is fine. It's just you got to make something new eventually. So we're going to go over here and pick up that old style APU with the new style uh, tug, I guess. And uh, we'll meet them over at stand too. So uh, if you're playing with friends, your friends can kind of work uh, with you to prepare everything that you need to do in order to uh, accept vehicles or aircraft as they arrive. Let's go ahead and back this up and uh, connect to that just in a minute here. Perfect. So yeah, one of the things I really like about this game is for some of the smaller trailers, like this one for baggage, we can actually drag some of these trailers around and we can kind of uh, angle them so we can push them so they're easier to pull out of a corner or something like that, which is something I'd like to see more in other games. Now, some of the trailers are larger in other games, but it is really nice that with these articulated trailers, we can actually push things, pull things, and we can even put like a tarp over these too for the rain. So eventually, when we go to offload the baggage, we can kind of do the courtesy and, um, you know, make sure all the luggage is dry. Let's go ahead and back up just a little bit more here, and we should be good. And let's see if we can drag that forward. We can kind of pull this one very slowly. It's a big old heavy unit, so there we go. And our aircraft, as you see there, the airport sim one, is moving its way over there. Now, um, in this game, we're also able to upload our own custom liveries. So if you want to do United, American Airlines, Lufthansa, any airline, you name it, you can definitely import that, or even meme ones like the Giggity Goo Airlines. So if you want to do your own thing and design your own stuff, go for it. Again, this also has Steam Workshop support, not only for the aircraft, but also for some of the scenarios. And with Workshop support, we could see a whole slew of all sorts of other new things coming as this game picks up uh, Steam a little bit over time. We're going to drive down this way. It's kind of hard to see in this rainstorm, but really cool that we can actually go into like a third-person view. Things look really nice. They look realistic. Pretty cool. And uh, I might be driving the wrong way or whatever, but uh, I got to learn. And I think that's a good thing for this game is once you've learned the tutorials on how to do the jobs you can then go to each of the different airports and find out how they do the jobs in different areas and then start working with friends which is going to be probably the most fun honestly all right airplane is just pulling up so we're going to go oh it's actually uh, an angled uh, parking spot here an angled stand so let's turn off our engine and get ready with the cones Cool thing, too, we can stack all these cones up. It's real nice. Yeah. So we can stack up to five, put those onto the side, and then we can do the same here. Perfect. And we can grab more out of here if we want to. There's the chocks in there as well. And uh, no need to marshal, but, of course, marshalling will require us to essentially kind of guide the aircraft left and right. And there is tutorials on everything in this game for those types of things. So that's probably the most helpful of all of them is, you know, there's the way it's done in real life. And then there's the way it's done in a game, and those are sometimes a little different because, of course, real life, where you actually have to move your body, is a little different than how you have to move a, a button or a joystick or something like that. All right, the engines are powering down now for this aircraft. We don't want to walk in front of those engines. That would be a big, big no-no. And if you do that, you get a steam achievement for that, so I'll let you figure that out on your own. But we are going to at least try to be a little useful for our time and start dropping chocks where they need to go. So we'll go ahead and pop these uh, ones down the middle. And then we'll try to walk down the side a little bit. Don't do this, but, you know, we're going to just do it for video game purposes. That's all. We're a pro gamer. Nothing like jet wash. All right, chocks are where they need to be. And that means the aircraft will not be able to move, hopefully. Unless the wind is strong enough, I suppose. And we're also going to, uh, I think we can put our bypass pin in there, yeah. So this is just supposed to make sure the plane doesn't move. It's not going nowhere. It's here now. And that's good. Now we're going to go ahead and put down the cones. Now, this is not the same for every scenario in the game. Sometimes you and your ground crew, even if it's you and four friends, might team up with the AI to do different things. Like, for example, uh, the AI might be in charge of doing the uh, APU power-up and getting the plane started and whatnot, and then you and your friends will just be in charge of pushback. So uh, attaching the plane to a uh, tug and pushing it back and uh, getting it rolling. So there's many different scenarios for the game, different challenges, different things to do, different places to go, and of course you can make all your own scenarios too. So if you want to change up the weather at any time and make it a giant snowstorm in your uh, sandbox games, you can definitely do that too. 
Yeah, realistic uh, airport from what I've heard. A few people have actually been to this uh, airport. And we've uh, streamed the demo of this game, and we've also streamed a little bit of the multiplayer, too, trying out all the different scenarios for it. So uh, this is certainly one I want to play more than once. Oh, another great thing here, too, that's really cool. Uh, if you check this out, we can actually yeah, take off our headphones. And it'll be a lot louder. So um, it's kind of cool to take off your headphones when nothing's running and hear the ambient uh, rain and other things running like that. Uh, let's go ahead and check our tablet, make sure we did that right. We sure did. Uh, and now we need to move on to uh, connecting the GPU. So we'll go ahead and drop these cones off over here. So yeah, it's a pretty cool thing to be able to try to do as many of these planes as quickly as possible and uh, try to do it safely and work with friends to do it. And uh, I think you can also operate multiple aircraft at a time so long as they've uh, landed or they have a departure order or whatnot. So that's kind of on you to set them up however you want. All right, now I think this is a 737. Is that correct? I, I can't remember. It's been a while since I played Flight Sim and that's where most of my knowledge comes in. But uh, I think this is where we're gonna be powering up this aircraft. Yeah, this is our APU. Uh, GPU connection, so we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, thingy started up. This is kind of like the old power unit, like a rolling generator. We're gonna plug that in there. And those of you who know a lot about aircraft, work at airports, know ground operations or whatnot, feel free to, you know, correct me down below, add any information, stories, cool stuff that you've done or that you've seen or, you know, crazy stories or whatever of people doing things wrong. I've heard of people bumping the jet, uh, jetway into an airplane and caving in the side of it and whatnot in our uh, live stream. So uh, <laughs> certainly some interesting things that have happened for sure. All right, we're now connected and we need to uh, signal the flight crew to uh, stop their APU as soon as we get this started. So we're going to move this thing from idle to uh, run. And we should be able to do that uh, by turning on our engine power to be able to engine start. There we go. And then we'll let this uh, sit for a little bit and swing that to run. And it should be operational here in just a moment. Alright, I think we're good. We're putting out power. There is a tutorial on all the different equipment as well, and I'm using my knowledge from the demo from a few months ago, but damn, does that look really cool. Alright, I think we're uh, connected now, so let's go ahead and uh, make sure all that's set and ready to go. I don't want to pull that out just yet. Okay, that looks just fine. Set engine to run, DC output. And I think we... Should be ready with that step, and now we just need to signal the flight crew. So we're going to get onto the radio by pressing 1. We're going to go to flight deck and tell them about the APU, and now we want them to turn off their APU, because now they're running on ground power. So they can go ahead and disconnect that. All right, cool. So yeah, we can leave this here now, and we're going to go grab the uh, stairs to get people off the plane. So we're going to go over to this vehicle and pull it up to the uh, door. And uh, yeah, you can see what one person can do pretty quickly in this game, although it's pretty fun to have a crew... Uh, playing their different roles. I think you'll have to play multiple roles in order to... It, it, what is that? A giant... Whoa, what? Is, is that a nuclear blast? Ah! Nuclear testing going on off the keys. Don't look at it. Don't look directly at it. Oh, it's over. Wow, it's, it's like nuclear blast coming in. What's going on? Anyway, yeah, so if you uh, each pick two jobs uh, to do, everyone can kind of work as a group, and that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, stairs right up to the edge of this door. And I think that should do it. Ooh, careful. It's a little, um, you know, you need to be a little precise. It is hard to do with a mouse and keyboard like I'm playing with. But again, fully playable with a controller. And I think we just need to back up just a little bit and even out. And I think we'll be good. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up to the door. I think that's, oh yeah, that looks pretty good actually. About as good as it's going to get. So let's go ahead and uh, put down our uh, supports. Let's connect to the aircraft, and let's go up there and open that door. Green light is solid, so we are good to go. Let's go ahead and hop out then. We're going to head up to the top of the stairs, and we're going to open up the aircraft door. Don't want to uh, have that automatic escape slide blow off, so let's go ahead and drag these, and we should be good. All right. So now the uh, 
cabin crew should have everybody, uh, you know, let them know that they're free to get off and everyone will walk to the terminal. A rainy day, I wouldn't be very happy about that, especially if I had a kid or, a, you know, a carry-on or something, but what are you going to do? There might be, I guess, maybe a bus or something to bring people there, IRL, but, uh, yeah, who knows. So our goal now is to wait for all these fine folks to get off the plane, and as they're deplaning, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect the stairs after that, and then start offloading the cargo and taking all the luggage out. So obviously we don't want to hit anybody, so we're not going to move any vehicles while they're out here. And I think there is, uh, like, a penalty for that or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you're trying to simulate it right, at least I'm attempting, then uh, you want to just wait a little bit. What's this guy have? Oh, cell phone. Cool. All right. So let's go find where the uh, conveyor belt is. Should be down here somewhere. So we're going to get the uh, conveyor cart. Actually, a cool thing here I had forgotten is we can go to the map, and there is a 3D map or a 2D map like what I'm using. And you don't have to run around. You can just teleport from... Uh, vehicle to vehicle and get what you need by just clicking on it so if you click here on the uh, like the stairs truck like I did or like on the conveyor uh, then you can get whatever you need and um, get this thing going so uh, yeah we're gonna avoid the passengers we're gonna just try to try to behave here and drive the conveyor where it needs to go and once every single one of these people are inside the airport this task will be complete and we can truly move on to the next one. But that shouldn't stop you from moving vehicles to where they need to go and driving around and simulating thing as, things as realistically as possible. So that should be the end of them getting out of the plane. So we just need to wait for them to get to the terminal. All right. So we have ourselves uh, forward and, uh, and aft cargo holds here. And we're going to have to pull up raise our conveyor and offload those but before we do I'm just gonna park this here for now turn off the engine and we're gonna go grab the other one so yeah if you're playing alone I guess you can teleport uh, real life you'd have to walk to every one of these but also in real life I don't think they'd have one person doing one thing all the time uh, we're gonna go grab this tug here and uh, this essentially is where we're gonna be dropping our bags too so as we pull up we're gonna throw everyone's luggage onto these I believe and it'll take them into the airport and I'm not exactly sure where they come out, but everybody, yep, single files heading into the airport. Very nice. Orderly, uh, orderly crew. Or, well, crowd. Passengers. Souls. All right. So let's pick up these carts. And as I showed you before, it's really easy to get these things out of the corner. And I think we uh, probably want to use all three of these. I think there's about 45 different bags on this plane. So it's going to be a lot of, like, baggage work. Oh, is there not a, not a brake here? Oh, the brake on this is really weak. Yeah, I plowed right into that thing, didn't I? All right, well, we're going to connect one. There we go, and then we'll pull forward a little bit. And, oh, yeah, you can actually sit as a passenger in these vehicles, too, which is really nice. If you're driving with a friend, uh, you can both... If you want to simulate things realistically, and I don't think enough games do this, where they let you sit with a friend. Construction Simulator and a few other, uh, you know, sims that put it in is kind of a bonus. I think there's a realistic thing where sometimes the logistics is somebody has to ride with somebody else to get back to somewhere after... Um, you know, after delivering something. So it's kind of cool to be able to uh, go with someone and simulate the job fully. So it is nice to try to get closer and closer to how actual crew logistics works for ground crew. There we go. Another one connected, and then we'll get that last one out of here. I think it was... Uh, was it in this corner? Oh, there's one here. Oh, actually, let me show off these. This This blew me away, by the way. Being able to pick up these little tarps and, and drop them onto the uh, different baggage cars is really cool. You can actually lower these things, too, and keep everything nice and dry. Uh, I guess you have to find one per, but uh, pretty cool that they actually fully simulate dropping the covers for uh, passenger luggage. And, I don't know, it's just a nice little courteous thing to do. And uh, another job that someone would have to do, go grab each of these and put them onto the cart. So we're going to do that, too. Giggity. And let's get one more. And, uh, yeah, obviously these things would probably be wet from the storm, so you certainly uh, want to keep those dry. Now, of course, we can simulate 24-hour operations, day and night. You can change the time at any time, as well as the weather. And uh, that's in your uh, sandbox scenarios, or sandbox uh, gameplay. This is a scenario, so it's kind of more set where that storm's coming in, and we got to get things done within a certain amount of time. Uh, but harder for one person to do, especially when a group could do it better. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing pulled out. Oh, let's lower this side, too. Each side is fully uh, controllable. That blew my mind. When I saw that, I was like, man, that is so cool. 
And I wish more games would uh, allow you to have, like, tarps and things like that. All right, this thing is not going to cooperate with me. In order to pull this, you got to kind of aim a little bit in front of it. And then Q and E will control the uh, angle of the hitch like that. And uh, we've tried the pickup truck in order to pull some things around, but it looks like the tugs, these things are what you uh, will haul everything around with. So uh, the baggage cars, the APU, those types of things are all transported uh, via these smaller tugs or whatnot. Okay, let's go ahead and connect the third one. That should be enough. There we go. Yeah, it's cool. All right, not bad. And we're going to straighten that out a little bit. Hey, very nice. And we'll go ahead and go for the aft cargo thing first. Now, if we're going to go for the forward one, we're going to probably have to move the APU and uh, finagle things around a little bit. But, yeah, that's why with a group of friends, those types of things are a little easier. Now, I've got to say one of the more interesting things which we'll jump to take a look at after doing baggage is refueling. So we'll jump to another scenario in just a little bit and uh, check out some of these other things because they're all very interesting and it's cool to see exactly how this is done. I've been on a uh, mini airplane but never really knew uh, until this game out how most things were done. Except for the uh, catering truck, of course, the most important vehicle at the airport. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the conveyor. And let's open these up. Nice. Perfect. It's like a little tour to movie studio or something like that. So we're going to go inside the aircraft where they actually have all the luggage. Look at that. And so we can drop it onto the conveyor. And then, uh, yeah, this is where it's better done with multiple people. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole uh, slew of bags on the ground at the bottom. But, you know, what are you going to do? If you're alone, it, it's just impossible to offload everything and catch it at the other end. You can also throw bags around if you want to be that guy. You can certainly throw a... Uh, piece of luggage and break it open if you want to be that guy and then you can pick that up too and apologize profusely to the uh, customer there you go and load everything up so then we bring that back to the beginning where we saw the uh, two conveyor belts near the airport and that'll get it to where it needs to go at the baggage claim so we need to do that uh, I think there's 45 bags so there's like I don't know 20 something in the back and uh, 20 something in the front uh, so we have to offload all of those and then just disconnect the GPU. So just those two things in reverse. All right, let's go to a different airport and let's do some refueling. Maybe Poland? Yeah, that'd be cool. And boy, another rainy day and you'd certainly be right. Welcome to Poland. Welcome to Warsaw, where we've got a lot more equipment to work with, a lot bigger equipment too. We've got differences in some of the conveyors. And uh, now we have trucks to drive around the airport with, too. A much bigger airport than what we're used to or what we saw before at Key West. And I think this is maybe it's amongst one of the bigger ones with lots of stuff to do. So for a very skilled group of uh, friends, this would be certainly a lot to handle. And, of course, with our operations going on here, this is the midday rush where you can see we've got aircraft coming in from Barcelona and Oslo. And one Corfu here that needs us to connect the GPU and start refueling. So that's what we're going to do here now. And so, yeah, as we await for aircraft to be ready for departure and or ready for arrival, uh, we can do lots of different things with our friends to uh, organize that and get things to where they need to go, including all the baggage uh, cars and things like that to offload bins and luggage, flatbeds here and a lot of other things, including the very useful APU, which we'll need. So we'll, let's go ahead and get connected here and we'll get things started. A different aircraft this time, a different airport, but yet the same old weather. So I think this is the Airbus uh, that we're dealing with. Last time it was the uh, 737, and now we're on to the Airbus, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and back this in, get a little closer. It'll be good for now. And we'll pull that forward. All reliable, but remember, there's like two different versions of like the APUs and two different versions of like the conveyor belts, two different aircraft. So uh, some of the same tasks have different equipment and different ways in which they're uh, completed in different locations, even at the same airport. All right, so the APU is needed first, and then we're going to go on to the refueling. So we're going to fast travel over to that refueling truck and get that started ASAP. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can pull up this way. And then uh, see if we can keep that a little bit away from the aircraft. This should be good right about here. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and turn that off, and we'll get the APU set up. So same deal as before. We just need to find the uh, position in which to... I'm not even sure where this may be. 
Ah, here we are. Ground electric connection. F yeah, fantastic. Perfect. So now we can plug that in here. And the newer APU kind of works a little differently, but still the same deal with plugging in and firing up the power. Same as we had before. We'll go ahead and hit that light. Engine start. And we'll let it uh, count down a little bit. I think after 14 seconds, that's where we can flip her over to uh, uh, DC output, and then we're good to go. And then we just got to contact the uh, aircraft. I think in this case it could be automatic, So, but all the planes and everything else is pretty different. So, Okay, switch that to run, and AP power complete. Or APU. APU, GPU stuff all complete. All right, now time to go get our tanker, which is going to be really cool. So we're going to park that over here, and then we're going to connect it to the wing where... I think on this aircraft, the wings and the uh, the center, as they, I think, say, uh, that's where it stores all of its fuel. I'm still learning, but this is a great tool to be able to learn how things are done, especially if you're a big fan of, like, Microsoft Flight Sim, and you love these aircraft and fly them all the time and have no idea how the ground operations work. <laughs> and there's a little bit more to it than just pushback, which is always a surprise to see how much is needing to be done. All right, where's our fuel tanker, then? Should be around here somewhere. Let's take a look on this big old list here. Ah, there we are. Refueling trucks will fast travel to one. And there we go. The big O refueling truck. Now, this comes complete with a pump and the jet fuel as well. No smoking, no cell phones, please. Wow. All right. Let's be very careful with this thing. So we are over here on this side of the map. Right down towards uh, number 46. And we need to go back to 24. So we will set that as our objective then to refuel the airplane. Back at stand 24, parking zone 24. So now we should be able to jump in this truck, which we can ride with a couple of friends. Fire that up, and we'll uh, get on our way. Let's take our headphones off, too. There we go. Kind of jarring to hear the uh, audio difference, isn't it? After having your headphones on. Probably a good idea to take them off when you're driving a vehicle, you know. But it, it certainly would be a lot quieter inside the cab. So uh, there's our aircraft down there, that big pink one at the... Uh, end of the road so let's go ahead and see if we can swing this around yeah Woo. uh not too bad to control this with a mouse and keyboard uh, you can also of course play with a game pad and maybe even a steering wheel too uh, but this is kind of along the lines of many of the other games where you're constantly in and out of vehicles so it's hard to pick just one you kind of got to work with both in order to get things uh working real nice and pretty for you so no rush we're going to work our way down the road and we need to now refuel with 12,000 kg of fuel. So we're going to be uh, fueling this up with quite a bit of fuel to get it on its way. And we're going to swing around this time. And I'm going to pull up next to the aircraft, pointing the same direction. So we're going to swing around. And see if we can make a big O turn here. back into first person. Now the reason we're doing this is because all the controls for the pump and whatnot are on the left side of the truck, so we do have to kind of pull up this way. And turn that off. Perfect. Alright, now we need to connect the grounding. I had no idea that this is how this was done, but they need to connect a wire essentially to the aircraft um, landing gear in order to ground it for, I, I guess, electric shock and whatnot, so obviously fire prevention. Let's go ahead and uh, grab this here. And we're going to connect the grounding to the landing gear just like that. Perfect. And then now it's time to uh, connect the fuel hose. So that's right about here. Jet fuel right there. Boom. And we're going to grab the hose now. So that's right here on the right side. Gonna pop that in under the wing, and we should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and open the valve, and this should be ready to rock. Now, interestingly enough, this is not controlled by the truck, as I was imagining, but it's all done by computer via the aircraft. So I'm not sure if the aircraft uh, via the hose or something is able to communicate back and forth, or if it's done via radio signal. I'm not exactly sure how it's calculated. Uh, might have something to do with the truck. I don't know, knowing it's the weight or whatever. It knows what it is because it isn't, that type of thing. But anyway, fuel panel here, and we're going to have to put in ourselves um, 12,000 kg. So uh, interestingly enough, we need to pre-select 
And uh, I haven't done this before. I, I kind of looked over my friend's shoulder to do it, so bear with me. This is almost like a Resident Evil puzzle where we have to, like, guess exactly how much fuel. So this is done by 1,000. So that means that this is 1,250 uh, kg of fuel in each wing. So there's the left, right, and center. And so we need to uh, put in, if we can swing over that way, uh, 1,400 uh, from what I understand. So this is uh, calculated by... Uh, pre-selecting it. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to tell it how much to put in and then we're going to tell it to start pumping. So we have to kind of, it's almost like prepay at the pump. We need to uh, tell the aircraft, A, this is how much you're going to be accepting, and then we need to pump that and then confirm that with the uh, flight crew. And uh, we had trouble getting it precise. So, and we had a few people uh, during a live stream of this when we were playing also multiplayer, uh, a few people were help, trying to help us get it right. And uh, people who actually do this or have done this as careers before weren't able to uh, figure it out either. So if you know how to get it precise, let us know. And, uh, you know, a little, a little extra is fine. We'll just charge them a little extra, you know. So it's okay. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can uh, test that. Ah, that resets things. Okay, so we have to maybe hit... Uh, let's actually try this out and see what we do to activate it. That might be the way to open it. Let's see. That seems to be the only other one we can interact with. So we got to flip that up again. Yeah, there's your total in the lower right corner. So 1.25 plus 1.25, surprise, surprise, is the actual, uh, yeah, uh, 2.5. Now, this is really cool because if we get additional aircraft in this game, I would really like to see all the additional details for uh, other aircraft, maybe other than passenger, like different types of cargo aircraft, where things may be similar but work differently too. So it would be really interesting to see. All right, let's go one more. And let's try flipping that battery power there. Ah, oh, all right. <laughs> Third time will be the charm. I'll figure it out. Uh, maybe mode select. Oh, there we go. How do we uh, adjust that? All fuel, open, close switches. Not sure exactly. Open, close switches must be in closed uh, state. I'll figure it out. It's a guessing game for me, but I'll get it. you got to cheer me on now as I try to figure it out. Down one. There we go. Hey! There we go. Third time's a charm for me. Cool. So we'll try to pump that uh, where it needs to go then, under the wings. And I wonder if we can hear the pump working. Or any of the equipment. Not quite, but you can actually see it fueling. Uh, over on the left side, you see that we do require 12,000 kg, and it's at uh, 3,700, so um, that'll be done shortly. So as somebody's monitoring this, uh, one of your friends can also be going to get all the baggage cars and uh, start maybe pick if we're uh, getting this ready for departure. Obviously, a luggage needs to go onto this thing. We'll need to get the passengers, too, so somebody would be operating the jetway here, uh, which we can actually operate while we're waiting for the fuel which is probably fine. Obviously, you don't want to walk away from that thing, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. We can actually operate the jetway, too, so we can get this ready for uh, passengers uh, to go onto the plane. So essentially, all we'll, do, all we'll be doing here is aiming it at the door and then getting it so that way passengers can get on board. So uh, pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, uh, but kind of tricky to drive. It, it works in a very interesting way. Um, and I still have trouble with it, but you get it close enough to the door and you'll have yourself some passengers uh, getting on board. And I wonder if there's a different way to look at this. It's kind of hard to see, but the, the wheel underneath, uh, you can see it rotating here, and we can kind of pull ourselves in a direction. And then we can kind of aim it towards the door and then precisely try to bump it to where it needs to go, right about here. And what's interesting with this thing is I think it's only, like, forward drive. So if you want to move in reverse, you actually have to, like, aim the wheel away. It's a very strange device, but it's really cool. Uh, I think that's maybe a little too close. I need to figure this out here. Let me see if I can aim the wheel away. And we'll check on that fuel. Oh, we're short by 50 again. Not exactly sure why, but... We'll have to figure that out. But anyway, we would hit enter here, and our passengers would begin to uh, get on board. Let me mess with this, and we'll see if we can do it. All right, so I got it as close as I could, but I couldn't get it to 
connect, but the light will turn green, you hit enter, and the uh, rest of the, kind of the shielding there will lock around the plane, and passengers will come on down. You'll actually be able to see them walking down the jetway, too, but we got to run, because we got our fuel ready to go here. So uh, we're just short, just a little bit, so we're going to top it off with a little bit more uh, than what we need, so we'll go back to the fuel panel, and let's kind of put in, you know, just a, just a little bit. We'll top it off just a little bit more, and... Uh, See if we can, uh, there we go, separate that. We're going to put a little bit more in. There we go, cool. Now we're done there, so just a little bit more than they needed, but we'll confirm that with the flight crew and they'll be happy with that. So all good. Uh, we turn that off, close this, and then uh, we'll have to disconnect all the grounding and whatnot. So we just do the opposite of what we did. We disconnect the grounding, apparently. Oh, fuel pump must be disabled, so... This will be the way to do that. So we must disable the fuel pump. And then we take the hose back. And then we take the grounding off there and reconnect it all to the truck. Fueling is probably the fastest thing and probably pretty cool too with the computer. Uh, APU, of course, is like the fastest. But I don't know. It, it, fuel, I thought, would be much more complicated. And it is more complicated than most the things here, but... Yeah, it's really fun, so I like that a lot. All right, let's make sure we close that uh, compartment, which we did. So let's go ahead and contact the flight crew, and we'll confirm that this is done. So uh, up here to flight deck, fuel, confirm. Close fuel panel. Ah, right. Boom. Now if you caught me doing that, then you're right. I missed it. Okay, so let's go back, and we'll... Uh, there we go. Tell them it's all done. Perfect. So now what we do is, interestingly enough, we grab like three things of luggage and toss it onto the plane. Apparently this thing's only going to have like six passengers, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. But pretty cool, though. Pretty cool. I like this game, and I want to play this a lot more with my friends in the future. And so shortly after release, I'm going to try to team up with all my buddies and try to do all the jobs in Airport Sim from catering to refueling to push back and getting everybody where they need to go and being organized and seeing uh, what shenanigans occur because, you know, multiplayer games, there's always that one guy. So anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching today's video. Check it out with the link down below in the description. Let me know what you think of the game, too, and are you an expert in this? Have you uh, done some of these things before? Do you work at an airport? Are you familiar with the process and the planes? Let me know down below. I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching.